good afternoon and welcome to our service here at St Botolph's. We here at St Botolph's hope that you find this time helpful. And this service is especially for those who have lost loved ones and who still keenly feel the loss of someone dear to them, however long it has been since they died. Remembering them, even during a service such as this, can remind us powerfully of the pain of losing them. But Christians believe that God knows our pain, shares it with us and helps us to bear it. For this reason, we can speak and pray directly to God, sharing with him all our thoughts and feelings, even those which we might be hesitant to speak out loud. Often people feel a good deal of anger when someone they love dies. Why has God allowed this to happen, we might say, or it's not fair. We can tell God exactly how we feel and ask for his help to move on. This service is designed to help us focus on God, who is our light. Just as he shares the darkness with us, so he brings light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The candle which we will light in this service will flicker in the darkness and remind us of the truth that however dark our circumstances, the light of Christ is everlasting and he remains faithful to his promise to lose none of those given to him. We meet in the name of Christ who died and was raised by the glory of the Father. Grace, mercy and peace be with you. And also with you. We meet to remember those whom we know and love, but see no more, to renew our trust and confidence in Christ, and to pray that, beyond the gate of death, we may come to share with them in the new creation. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace, and rise in glory. Amen. Blessed are you, Heavenly Father, for you have raised your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead and have given to us the promise of resurrection life in your new creation. Free us from fear of death and inspire us through the fellowship of your saints to embrace in all its fullness the life you have given us. As you send your Holy Spirit to those who walk in darkness and the shadow of death, so remember in your kingdom those who have gone before us, that resting now in Christ, they may come to that fullness of life you have promised for all your people. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We listen to our readings. The first reading is from Lamentations. Despite suffering and grief, the writer expresses confidence in the kindness of God. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 26 and 31 to 32. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul that seeks him. 
It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is taken from the first book of Corinthians, verse chapter 13, in which Paul expounds the nature of the greatest gift, the gift of love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Here ends the second reading. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Everything that is suffered with love is transformed. As we gather here this evening on All Souls Evening for our act of loving remembrance, I invite you to hold on to these words. Everything that is suffered with love is transformed. The words are attributed to St. Teresa of Avila, a nun who lived in Spain some 500 years ago. She was no stranger to suffering. Her mother died when Teresa was 14 or 15 and she endured lifelong ill health. Through her prayers and meditation, she came to believe that Jesus' sufferings, undertaken in love for humankind, were, despite the pain, wonderfully transformative, both for him and for us. 
Jesus' resurrection was, of course, the most powerful transformation of all. All physical hurts and damage, damage healed. And there was a corresponding healing of his family, friends, his disciples. Because through Jesus, they were transformed and inspired to become messengers of the truth despite their own sufferings, to bring the good news of Christ's love and salvation to the world. And it's because of that loving transformation that we are here tonight. We come to remember with love those whom we have committed to God's care at the time of their death in recent years. We'll remember them individually soon, as their names are read out, and of course we cherish our personal memories of them. We also recognise before God the impact their death had on us. Our loved ones journeyed into the next life alone, without us. But their death is now a part of our life whether that death was a kind and gentle one occurring at the right time and place, or whether it was an unkind and searing death whose toll was immensely painful for us. All of these deaths we remember, asking God's mercy on us, asking that wounds may be healed, tensions may be relieved, and that our remembrance may be transformed and renewed in the light of God's infinite love and care for us. Next, we acknowledge that one of the most enduring of human emotions is sorrow. Sorrow, small or large, impinge on us all at some time in our lives. The world around us is full of sadness and hurt. It's almost too painful to bear. Christians believe that out of trial, sorrow and anguish can come a strengthening of faith. We believe that if we let him, God can enable those who have known what it is to have lost a loved one to develop a greater sense of empathy and tenderness. Death can bring in a variety of emotions and sometimes we are able to show those feelings. At other times they remain locked inside us, hidden by anger and bitterness. Tonight, in God's presence, we are offered the chance to let him in. He sees, he knows, and he gives us grace to live through each day. And he offers us the transforming promise of hope. Thirdly then, as we're gathered together now, we hold on to living hope. We're able to do that because we know of God's immense love for each and every one of us. Our readings spoke of that love. Lamentations says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. And Paul's wonderful letter to the Corinthians assures us that love never ends. Faith, hope and love abide. We have hope because Jesus himself experienced a brutal death so that we might have eternal life with him. Love brings hope, but love also brings pain. We experience the anguish of death because we have loved. Suffering is the part price we pay for loving. Yet the bond of love continues to unite us beyond death knitting together the people of heaven and earth in one transformational embrace. Everything that is suffered with love is transformed. 
God does not expect us to be so transformed by our suffering that we go out to take the world by storm as did the disciples. God asks that we accept our loss, that we continue to cherish the memories of those we've lost. He asks that with renewed confidence and trust in him, we begin to move forward, to share his love, and to allow his healing and transformational spirit to work within us. Tonight then, we bring all our sorrows, all our memories, we bring also our own mortality. We bring all the love we hold and we offer everything to the God who suffered the death of his son, that we and the world might be transformed. All that is suffered with love is transformed. No one is ever lost to God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have been offered new birth, a living hope, and an imperishable inheritance. Amen. So let us pray. Let us pray for those we love but see no longer. We remember, Lord, the slenderness of the thread which separates life from death and the suddenness with which it can be broken. Help us also to remember that on both sides of that division we are surrounded by your love. Persuade our hearts that when our dear ones die, neither we nor they are parted from you. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. Let us give thanks for the lives of those we love. Let us be still for a few moments as we remember them and all the special ways they touched our lives. We thank you that our loved ones who have gone from our sight are in your keeping. Help us to leave them with you in perfect trust and safe in the knowledge that you love them and us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all who mourn. Lord, you wept when your friend Lazarus died so you understand how we feel. If we feel anger, pacify us with your patience. If we feel pain, soothe us with your tenderness. If we feel despair, give us hope. If we feel at peace, hold us in that peace. Heal us in our brokenness. Console us with the knowledge of your unfailing love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all organisations that care for the sick and the dying. We thank you, Lord, for the hospice movement, and in particular, Thorpe Hall. We pray for our hospitals and nursing homes, for the hospital at home service, and for every place that provides care for those at the end of their earthly journey. We give thanks for the skills and dedication of doctors and nurses, and all who support them in their work. We thank you for the love of family and friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Let 
vows commend all those who have departed this life to our Heavenly Father, holding fast to the Christian hope of the resurrection. Heavenly Father, your dear Son taught us that life is eternal and that love does not cease when we die. Draw us closer to you. Give us confidence that in your presence we will meet our loved ones again in Christ, who loved us and gave his life for us. Let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. commemoration of the departed. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Jean Audrey Brenda Sibthorpe 
David Healer, Francis Anne Greenwood, Margaret Joyce King, Muriel Baines, Enid Lillian Barnes, Margaret Eastman, Mavis Eileen Butler, Doris Fulcher, Brenda Streeton. Eunice Lawrence, Anthony John Ward West, Jean Thelma Gower, Cynthia Smith, Isabella Newell Grant Cameron, Marlene Janet Bradshaw, Molly Cook, Leslie John Garfield Boyden, Christine Smart, Edith Mary Sibiter, Donald Nunn, Peter Taylor, Sheila Smeaton, Anne Isabel Elphick, Margaret Isabel Cope, Queenie Elizabeth Taylor, Sylvan Hilvestra Blenman, Cicely Julie Veet Fisher, Wendy Elizabeth Hicks, Enid Leonora Harrison. We remember Richard Allison, Elizabeth Wright, James Sutherland Axe, Vera Joyce Walters, Anthony Leonard Cook, Cecily May Wilson, Rosemary Ellaby, Dennis Hill, Audrey Hill, Kenneth Cook, Eileen Twelvestree, Irene Wendy Gray, Desmond Joseph Keeley, Kathleen Phyllis Rose, Sheila Hampshire, Hilda Marjorie Condy, Francis George Stevenson, William Trollope, David William Carl. We remember Jean Mary Olson, Edward Frank Mann. John Mary Oswell, Kenneth Foster, Colin Errol Sandal, Mavis Seaman, Gladys Mary Burns, Margaret Kathleen Servers, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayers.
Hear us, O merciful Father, as we remember those we love and place them in your hands. Acknowledge, we pray, the sheep of your own fold, the lambs of your own flock, the children of your redeeming. Enfold them in the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of Christ, and raise them to glory in that new creation for which you have destined us with the whole company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. The eternal God is your dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Blessed is the Lord, our strength and our salvation. We hope that through the words and the music used in this service that you have found some comfort and some hope. The words that are used were very carefully chosen to try to reflect the balance that you may feel in your life between sadness and hope, between sorrow and joy in your memories of your loved ones. You will be in the prayers of those in this church during this next week. And if there is any way in which we as a church can help you, please do make contact with us. And the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. As we finish this act of worship, I would like to thank the members of the pastoral team here at St Botolph's, the ministry team and the bereavement team who all work together to make this service possible. <laughs>